Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hello. How's everybody doing today? Doing great. That's good. Awesome. Good. Doing real good. Excited. Well, I, yes, I'm excited too. This is the first time that we've had multiple people on here, and we got a lot to cover. So it's going to yeah. be a really good show today. Um, I'm going to kick off because we've got people already tuned in and watching. So. We're going to go down in my, uh, the way that I see it on my screen. We'll start with you, Gary. You want to tell everybody quick who you are? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, you guys, um, Gary Penta, I live in uh, Winter Garden, Florida. It's on the west side of Orange County, outside, right next to Disney. As a matter of fact, my windows rattle almost every night. Well, they used to when the fireworks would go off. And um, these are my three cohorts, uh, my two cohorts. Um, we do a lot of things together. We, um, you know, detect, we dive, um, we hang out. It's, we, we're having a, having a great time. Really looking forward to the summer. Awesome. And then we got here, Jerry. Jerry, you want to talk about who you are? Yeah, I'm Jerry Burbaugh from New Smyrna Beach, Florida. And uh, I'm a dive master for sea dogs and work with scuba wise. Awesome. And down here at the bottom of my screen, I got Mr. Mark. Hi, Carolyn. Hey, everybody. Uh, Mark Hoover here from Altamont Springs, founder and creator of Adventures in History, member of the Central Florida Metal Detecting Club. And uh, I try to keep these two guys in line. That's what I do. He does. He does. <laughs> Carol, let me tell you about this screen real quick. Um, a couple weeks ago, Mark, I was over at Mark's house. We were hanging out maybe about a week and a half ago. And he said something to me. He goes, you know something? He goes, um, the fact that my my granddaughter, you know, Solo, can um, she can turn to her friends when they say, what is what is your what does your mom and dad do? What does your grandfather do? You know what Mark said to me? He goes, I love the fact that my my granddaughter can turn to her friends as my grandpa's a treasure hunter. So that that's for you, Mark. Uh, for you, Mark. That's Thanks, awesome. Gary. When That's Phil, awesome. when Phil introduces me to his friends, he likes to tell them I'm a gold digger. So that starts the conversation <laughs> off very weird. Yeah. <laughs> so we got a lot to cover today, a lot to talk about. Um, I guess we'll start about, uh, we'll kick it off just talking about all the events going on, uh, what we got coming up and everything for events. Um, there's a lot of events going on around the country. Unfortunately, a lot of them have been delayed. Um, I know all of us had trips that we were going to go on. Um, yeah, I think yeah. the last one we got to go on might have been Florida Hunt 6. Have you guys Correct. been on any other ones after that? Or is that when everything kind of um, went crazy? That was, was that the last one? Yeah, I guess that would be the last one that we went on. Yeah. yeah. We, we, missed, we missed Star yeah. Hunt. We missed uh, yeah. Swing into the Summer up in... Uh, Illinois, we missed, there were numerous LDMA events that I was going to go to. Um, we, the Charles Garrett hunt, everything's been uh, postponed. Um, I don't really want to say people canceled their events. They're just trying to figure out the best time to get, have their events. Some of them have been rescheduled. Some of them are still scheduled, the ones that were in the fall. Like I know the Moonshine Treasure Hunt up in Crab Orchard, Kentucky. That one's scheduled to go at the beginning of um, September. I know Dig Stock's set to go. Uh, Columbus right. Day weekend, that one's still good to go. Um, I think next month I might be heading up to North Carolina to go to um, an LDMA event, um, which is the Lost Dutchman's Mining Association. It's really, it's a lot of fun. There's metal detecting, there's dredging, there's panning. It's, it's oh, wow. a totally different experience. So that might be my next event. And then dirt digging. What's, Go what's ahead. The, 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 rough, the rough date on that one, mid next month? Um, yeah, I think it's mid, uh, mid July. Mid July it is. Okay. And it's like okay. a three day um, event with hunts every day. And then everybody gets around the campfire. And um, it, it's a lot different than just going to a metal detecting event because everything's evolved. And this is at a place yeah. called Vane Mountain. So it's. Um, it's supposed to be one of the best places to go. So I'm excited. Yeah, about that's that. great. That does sound mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And then Dirt Digging PA up, uh, Kent Davis puts that on. Um, his was supposed to happen last month and it's going to be happening the third weekend in August. So um, I think I might go to that one. It just depends how everything's going on in the world. So right now it's kind of, um, 
I'm not fully committed to saying I'm going to be anywhere right now um, or making plans to go on a trip just because of the current state with everything going on right now. Right. But um, speaking of like hunts and trips and everything, I think you guys got something that um, you're going to be putting together going on. Mark, you want to talk a little bit about it? Sure. So the last couple of years, I've had the opportunity to go out to Idaho to an old gold mining ghost town, uh, courtesy of Rob Johnson from uh, Spud Diggers and, and White's Metal Detecting. And um, in talking to one of my coworkers, I found out that he owned or was a part owner in a, in a gold mine out in Montana. So in in the process of that core uh discussion he invited us to come out and and take a look at it and metal detect on the property in the property uh there's it's pretty remote uh we we are affectionately calling it morganville so that we can keep it anonymous but uh the idea is that property was in an area that back in 1910 um it was very prosperous there was a lot of people living there they were all gold mining and in 1910 a fire came through and burned millions of acres in montana it was one of the largest fires in the united states ever and that whole area was burned to the ground and they never really recovered for that uh, that area um, gets a lot of snow so there's not a lot of time during the year to be there so we're going in, we're going to metal and tech. We're looking for coins. We're looking for relics. We're looking for gold nuggets. Um, we're looking for adventure. We're really going there for adventure. There's six of us that are going. So the three of us, uh, Rob Johnson will be there. Uh, Ron Hollenbach is the owner of the property. He graciously is going to allow us to come out. And then James Opar from Tough Run Metal Detecting is going with us. So there will be six of us all together exploring that area and metal detecting. We're looking for a lot of fun. That sounds fun. Are you excited about it, Jerry? Yeah, I'm really excited. <laughs> Need what to find it? some gold nuggets. That's what I was going to ask. What do you want to find out there? Uh, probably just relics would be good, but a gold nugget would be nice. And what yeah. are you hoping to find out there, Gary? Um. I'm not a big coin guy. I'm not a big gold guy. Um, I am really into relics. If I found a badge of any kind, um, I would be I would be blown away. Any kind of a badge, or possibly a, even a, a a gold gun or a piece of gun, or just just some old history. Like Mark said, the the whole town burned down except for I think one building, right, Mark? Yeah, and, and, and everything that's there today, it's really remnants. And, you know, we can find the old dump. We can find out where they're camped. Uh, we, we have a general idea of that. And just on the badge idea, uh, I, I'll just mention this. What, what really gives me hope for that was when I was digging in the dump in, uh, in Idaho, the person right next to me, her hand was next to mine, and she literally pulled in, reached in and pulled out a 19, a brass 1915 chauffeur's license. Wow. And, uh, you know, you think about the date, well, we didn't have very many cars in 1915, much mm -hmm. less way up in the, up in the gold area. But what I discovered was in 1915, a chauffeur's license was actually your driver's license. So, uh, that was a really cool find. So, you know, to, to Gary's point from a relic standpoint, there's a really good chance of finding some nice relics in this area. Absolutely. Yeah. I just want to jump over to the chat for a minute. We have a lot of people joining. Um, uh, we've got Gypsy, Gypsy's on, Emily and Shannon are on, Mark Tominski's on, Ace, oh, Mark. Um, Jill, Mark Littleton. Um, boy, there's a lot of people on saying good morning. Uh, good morning. Sonia has joined us. Uh, Lisa's watching Jerry. Uh, Rob Harmon, uh, Greg, everybody knows Greg. Um, let's see here. Uh, Joe What's DeMarco up, says good morning. Good morning, Joe. Um, Nelson. So just wanted to give a shout out and Michelle says hi. Just wanted to give a shout out to anyone. If you have any questions or anything for the crew, just drop them over here. I'm keeping an eye on the chat. So, okay. um, yeah, the gold is pretty interesting. Um, 
I've never, I mean, I had one time when I went up and I, I was shoveling some dirt and throwing it into the sluice boxes and dredges. And that was my only real experience doing any real dirt digging. I have done some panning when we went up to Colorado, Mark. And uh, I also did some at the Garrett Hunt a couple of years ago. But um, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. We, um, I've never been gold panning. I think Mark has tried it before. Um, and Jerry, of course, Jerry, Jerry di um, digs for gold all the time, and especially on his treasure X. But um, as far as painting, I've never actually done it before. Well, over here at Kellyco, um, were you guys aware that we do have the the pay dirt now? Oh, I remember hearing something about that. How did how did yeah. that work? Tell us about that. Yeah, how does that um, work? Well, we um, work with Gold Bay. Gold Bay is out of California, and it's really excellent quality dirt. And we have different types of um, uh, bags of dirt that you can get. And we have, um, like, we've got one that's guaranteed to have five grams of gold in it. Um, we've wow. got, we've even got them with 15 grams of gold in it. And they're big bags, and you just pan it out. Um, I know even uh, Miss Emily was on there. She got a bag of it and she got a nice little picker that she pulled out from it. I mean, it's good quality gold that's in there. And if it says it's going to be a gram, you're going to get a gram. Um, we even have a, a bag of one gram rare snake river gold. So um, that one's been a hit. So uh, we've been trying it, seeing how it's doing. And the response has just been crazy. Everybody loves the dirt. We're getting a lot of positive feedback. And um, it's something that you can just do, get the dirt, pan it out. I mean, it's it's becoming really popular. Does that come with um, a, a pan, an actual one of the green pans? No, it does not. We did have a bundle that we had together with the prospecting, with the pan and everything. Right. Um, but we have numerous pans on our sites. Um, Garrett's got a great setup that you can get. There's Mine Lab's got some. There's some Keen uh, pans and stuff like that. So you would need a gold pan to go along right. with it. Okay, good. So. Well, we got uh, we got about two weeks, two weeks to go before we leave for Montana. Um, let me see if I can get hold of a bag or two and. I guess, what do you do in the bathtub? Where do you do it at? Um, well, it's what you do is you take a lot of people use the hose. They just add a little bit of water to it because what happens is when you're panning, I'm not an expert. Like I said, I've just done this a few times, but you're going to kind of shake it around and you're adding the water. You could take like a little, like a bus tub you'd see at, um, like that they use at the restaurants, fill that with gold. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. not with gold, with water. And then you just kind of, move it around and you shake it, you dip the pan, move it forward. So um, I don't know if I'd use a bathtub because of the drain. I'd be scared if the gold oh, went down because I'm not too coordinated and still learning it. Yeah. But as you get the dirt out, because it's so heavy, it's going to the bottom. And that's where the black dirt is. When you're seeing that black dirt down in yeah. there, it's the same. It's the same weight as the gold. So the more you shake, the more you get down there. And then you can use the little, um, you could get the little, what do they call it? A sucker thing. <laughs> Oh, What's yeah. that called, Mark? You know what syringe? I'm talking about? Yeah, it's I like a little dropper. Yeah, the dropper. That's yeah, the it's little called. dropper. It's got the little rubber thing on it, and you suck it up. Yep, and then you could just put it in a little vial, and it's pretty cool. I've got a couple of <laughs> little vials. I'm going to go pan in uh, Gary's bathtub, so uh, <laughs> that's where I'm going to pan mine. <laughs> You're just going to wait and then pull my trap out and get all the gold. <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, um, if anybody's interested, definitely just let us know. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to try it. Awesome. Yeah. Speaking of gold, um, Mark's got a gold, a recent gold story for us. What you got for us, Mark? Oh, is it, you're talking about the, the ring, the, the gold yes. ring? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you know, it's funny because we talk about gold and, you know, we realize that there's so many different variations of gold. You know, there's gold nuggets and there's gold panning and there's gold coins, you know, diving off on the Spanish wreck. And, and then there's gold rings. You know, people are looking for them on the beach. But uh, Gary and I and uh, Patricia Chin from the club were all metal detecting in downtown Orlando into an older section. And Patricia is phenomenal at getting permissions. And um, within a couple of hours, we had moved house to house to house. We were probably a block away, and we were getting ready to finish up. 
And uh, a gentleman walks up and says, what are you doing? And, of course, we immediately said, well, we got permission to metal detect on this property. And he said, oh, no, no. He goes, I just thought you were out here looking for water lines. And we said, no, we're looking for coins and rings and things that people lose in their yards. And he said, well, you know, that's too bad. You know, five or six years ago, I lost a ring in my yard, my wedding ring, gold wedding band. I said, yeah. oh, really? <laughs> and, you know, we're all looking at each other like, hey, you want us to come find your ring for you? And so um, we went next door to his house. But we didn't realize when we were there that um, it had already grown up with ferns and bushes and everything else. So we had to put the small coils on there. And I was using a MyLab Equinox 800. I think, uh, Gary, you were using the Equinox as well, weren't you? Or you, you were using the E-Track? Or the the equinox. No, for for that particular one, I, I we needed that real small coil on the equinox. So um, we all all for, actually Patricia had the large one, so she she had to back off a little bit. But um, yeah, the small coil was was amazingly um, uh, useful in that particular area with all those giant ferns. We we had um, we had an idea what the signal was going to be because he had a similar ring that we took a signal off of, so we knew kind of what we were looking for. The problem was there was so much tiny metal in this entire area that by the time you know half an hour, forty five minutes later, Gary and I were literally on our hands and knees with pen pointers, just like going down in there and looking. And sure enough, I got a close signal and I got down with the pen pointer. And it's that amazing feeling when you're pulling out all these nails and, and pieces of metal, and all of a sudden, this gold ring appears in the middle of the dirt, and it's like, oh, my gosh, we actually found it. And so uh, we went over to the owner, Brian, and uh, he was standing out in the street talking to one of his buddies, and I walked up to him, and I said, hey, Brian, I'm I'm really sorry. Now, Gary was videotaping all this and did a great job of putting together an amazing video of the whole uh, return. But I walked up to Brian and I said, Brian, I'm really sorry. I don't think I found your ring. I found something else. You maybe want this. And I opened my hand and showed him the ring and he just flipped, he flipped. out. He flipped. Uh, it was a great reaction. And of course, we got it all on video and Gary uh, posted it, the video after he did it all together. And, um, uh, and and sent it to my lab. My lab actually published it this week, so that was really cool to see them do that. But the the best part about it, I think, was, and I think everybody who's done a ring return can relate to this, is the the emotional reaction of the owners. And when Brian got it, he went in and got his wife, and it became really apparent that they didn't believe that we were actually going to find this ring. They didn't believe yeah. that. No. So when he brought his wife out. He had her stand there, and he handed me the ring, and then I handed it to her, and the expression on her face, she just burst into tears and uh, started hugging Brian, and uh, it was just a beautiful uh, reaction all the way around. And the feeling you get from all of us working together as a team to, to recover that ring is just priceless. It's better than anything I've ever done. Yeah. I'll post a, I'll post a link to the video. Um once once we're done here, I'll post it in the the, um, the Facebook post where this is. But um, yeah, yeah, because we have some uh, some people watching that are asking to see they want to see the video. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, everybody, a lot of people I've taught, even grown men, have said that you know they tear up. The genuine um, emotion between this this man and this woman. Mark actually held the ring and re and read the inscription on the inside and. The guy, he's a big guy, you know, a big, um, burly guy, and he just started to, boom, he started to, to just genuinely, um, you know, get really seriously emotional, and it was, it was, it was good. We had such a good time. It was an yeah. awesome video. It was a great Thank recovery. You. Great job, Appreciate guys. It. Appreciate it. You know, the uh, the interesting thing about that weekend was we we were after we were done, we were literally exhausted. And then we uh, we got a call, uh, as you know, Carolyn, uh, that night uh, to go help the police do some recovery on an evidence search the next day. 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you're exhausted, you're tired, you're like, oh, man, you know, I'm not sure I want to go out. But uh, Jerry and Gary and I all went out the following day and did an evidence search recovery successfully, by the way. That, and uh, I have to say that uh, Gary, uh, and, and again, I always look at this as a team effort, you know, you don't know who in the group is going to find what, but. Yeah. Jerry had a trifecta that day and found uh, found most of the evidence or all of the evidence that we were looking for. Um, so, you know, we can't say a lot about it other right. than, you know, we were helping the police. But it's also a great feeling to know that you're doing a service to the community when you go out and work with the police and do evidence recovery and you help them solve a crime. Um, it, that's That's a great feeling as well. And all three of us participated in that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's an excellent, I've been on many and I'm sorry I wasn't able to join you guys that day. Um, but I heard it was very successful. So yeah, that's it, amazing. Circumstances surrounding it were just, it was absolutely terrible. But um, as Mark said, yeah. you know, being able to do something for the, you know, positive for the community is a, uh, is a huge plus. Absolutely. Mm. And Mark brought up a point or earlier. I mean, we've talked about uh, ring recoveries, gold rays. We've talked about gold coins. Um, we, I mean, we've talked about uh, panning dirt. Um, Jerry has a different type of uh, looking for gold that he does. He does. You want to talk yeah. a little bit about Scuba Wise and the workshop and what you got going on? Yeah, I started diving with Scuba Wise maybe about... Uh... A year and a half, two years ago, I went to their workshop in the Keys, East, down in Isla Mirada, and that's how I got into treasure diving with them on the 1715 fleet. So, um, that's, yes. um, that's so one of my a... lifelong dreams, to, yeah. you know, scuba dive and do wreck recovery, and that's how I got into it, scuba-wise. Hmm. Awesome. A lot of people don't know that Jerry is our dive master. Uh, so, you know, when we're out diving, uh, we have the opportunity to do that. Um, I feel really good with Jerry being a part of our group because he has so much experience in diving. And I know that um, Jerry and Gary have both done uh, ring recoveries uh, where they actually had to go and dive in, in pitch black water and do recoveries there. So, uh, you know, Jerry's our, our kind of our dive expert, and, you know, that's that's who we rely on for our diving. That's and awesome as far to have as someone the, you can trust. As far as the, the workshop um, that Jerry mentioned, um, there's two classes coming up, Saturday, July 25th. That's the one that Mark and I will be in. And then on August 22nd, there's a second class. Um, so you get classroom instruction, right, Jerry? Is that how it works? Yes, yeah, so you go to a class first, 10 o'clock in the morning, and then you dive in the afternoon on a 1733 galleon. Okay. So start class in the morning and diving in the afternoon. And do you get to actually meet um, some of the uh, old time divers? Yeah, you dive with um, Captain Carl Fesmer. He's had over 40 years experience of treasure diving and Bradley Williamson and dive master Mark Littleton. And this is down in the Keys, right? This is down in the Keys, right, Jerry? We're going to be down in Almorada. Yep. And if you um, contact Mark at Scuba Wise and mention Kelly Co., he's giving $50 discount on upcoming classes. Okay. And how would we go about, um, is there a website or do we just email Mark if somebody's interested in attending the uh, yeah. workshop? Yeah, I can yeah, put it right so here. W- www.scubawise.com with a Z. Everybody uses the S, but it's W-I-Z-E. And you can contact Mark at, let me see where it says address. Mark at scubawise.com. Okay. You can also yeah. contact him on Facebook. But it's awesome. M-A-R-C like mine. I mean, he spells it the right yeah, way. Yeah. Mark, M-A-R-C at yep. scubawise.com. I see yep. Mark just actually dropped the link in there. 
in the right. chat awesome. so that Thanks, so people know where to go for it. That's awesome. Well, I got a so I got a surprise for uh, for Mark Littleton. Um, I spoke with him yesterday, and I asked him, "Have uh, has he ever had a patch created for for his vessel?" And he said he hadn't. So um, I told him that with his blessing, I'd like to do it. So I spent the afternoon yesterday designing a patch, and I sent it off to get produced. And it's going to um, be available in two weeks. It'll be available when before the class starts in July. And uh, he has plans to make sure that all of his new students get one of these limited edition collector patches. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. You ready, Mark? I'm ready. Right there. That's awesome. Look at that thing. Wow, that's really nice. Yeah, so that's that's the Pandion. The C16 is the designator. And you see it's got the blower on the back and the diver down below. And it'll be a black patch with the red diver down flag, the date on it. And uh, the lettering will all be in gold to signify, you know, what the ultimate um, goal is for for your dive at there is to find the gold. Anyway, that's the it's a limited run of 50, and like I said, all the students who show up at the uh, at the class will be able to get one of those. Great that's job! Really awesome. Great job. I like that patch a lot. Yeah, the guy Very who good. I sent it, the guy who um, helps to produce my patches. Uh, he, he remarked, he goes, that is a good looking patch right there. Good colors, nice, clean. Um, he goes, that's going to be a big hit. I'm jealous. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's really nice, Gary. Um, I might have to get with you about a patch that I want to work on. So. Okay. Okay, I can do that. That would be really And also, cool. also at the class, um, um, I'm going to be unveiling a diorama. You might have seen little snippets of pictures here and there, but it's going to be uh, a multi-level diorama that shows um, the Pandion and it shows a couple divers down below uh, in the water, different colors, LED back lighting. And I can't show it now because it's still in work, but I can show you this one that I was just recently had built. Let me take the cover off and get an idea of what this is a, you see that. That's awesome. It's a hard, a hard suit diver. And you see he's getting ready to pull up a cannon right there. So, um, and the shark's about to take his hand off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it actually, it has a light on it, the, the flashlight. He has an underwater flashlight and that lights up. That's well, really it awesome. It has some, some backlighting. The green screen is kind of killing it, but. Yeah, so I'm going to be presenting one to to Mark and um, and and Mr. Fismer, and um, so that should be exciting too. I'm looking forward to that. That's awesome. I really like your work. I mean, you're very talented, Gary. We talk about this all the time, and then you come Thanks. up with something, and I'm like, "There's no way he could top what he did before." And then mm -hmm. you just top it every time. It's amazing. Thanks. So. I appreciate it. Uh, well, I'll tell you one thing, between the three of you, you guys probably have the biggest collection of, of my stuff. Uh, Carolyn, I know you do. You got you got the Oak Island diorama. Yes. And uh, Mark's got a whole wing in his house devoted to my <laughs> stuff. And, and Jerry's like, Jerry's got a nice collection, too. Absolutely. Um, I just love looking at them. And hey, if you guys want to stop by um, our showroom oh, down yeah. here in Orlando, we have we have various um, dioramas that Gary has put together. You could see them in person. Um, we're going to change them out every couple months, keep it fresh and everything. Um, right now, we've kind of got like a diving theme going on. And there's some amazing, right. amazing pieces in, in the Thanks. showroom. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think we're going to have an autograph session at Kelly Co. And I'll set it up, you know, for a dollar an autograph. You can come and get Gary's autograph. <laughs> yeah. That's Maybe we'll awesome. give away some of that stuff, too, you know. I got, no, I got no room for it here. I've actually had to take – I have a, a big finds display cabinet, and I've slowly taken all my finds and putting in all my, my artwork. Oh, wow. So um, I, I've got to – you know, I've got to move yeah, – as you know, I don't, I don't sell any of my um, artwork – about 98% of it I give away to friends, charity, family members, and so forth and so on. As a matter of fact, I'm getting yeah, ready to give one, I, give one today away. They don't know it yet, though. 
You know, I don't think a lot of people know that and when people see Gary's artwork, he gets messages from all over the world. People from yeah. Europe even as reach out to him and ask him how they can get something. As he mentioned, he doesn't sell it. So, But he does get messages from everywhere. So it, it's kind of interesting to see the response that people have from all over the world. Yeah. I just got a request yesterday from uh, a guy in the Netherlands, and he wanted uh, some of my patches, as a matter of fact. So yesterday I sent out six patches to a collector in the Netherlands. That's so, awesome. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. I know I've reached out to you, Gary. Um, I wanted you to help me come up with uh, my wedding topper. That's right. Let's talk about your wedding, Carolyn. <laughs> Oh boy, it was supposed to be June 20th. I don't know yeah. all this that got delayed. So now it's going to be September 19th. I guess it's a good thing because in the meantime, I done and messed up my legs. So I would have been walking down the aisle in a boot. So, <laughs> but yeah, yeah I and moved out to September now. Where's it going to be at? Do you have a venue yet? Oh yeah, it's going to be down in Deltona and it's at the Diamond L Ranch. Um, nice. I'm having a big barn wedding. That's like my dream wedding. So oh, wow. it's going to be really fun. And you asked me to make um, wedding toppers for your cake. Yep. Yeah, and I agreed to do it. So we're going to sit down and do, uh, you know, discuss, you know, what kind of, you know, obviously I'm thinking you're going to want to have metal detecting gear on your cake. Yeah, I was thinking like metal detecting for me and tennis for Phil because that's who we are. And obviously, I don't do good at tennis because I, you know, I'm in my situation because I tried to do something he liked. <laughs> well, you know, if we bring our metal detectors, we can, like, put a cross with our metal detectors. Y'all can walk under it. And then when you're done, yeah. we can go out and metal detect the property. Right. Well, it's really interesting. Of course, you guys know me and I love history. <laughs> this ranch has been in the family for over 100 years and it is uh -huh. still an active um, working ranch. They had a lumber uh -huh. company on, on, on the property. Um, their family first um, across town, they had uh, their lumber mill. It was made in, eight, I believe it was 1860 is when it was first established. So this is a historic piece of property that we're getting married at and I'm still working on being able to get permission to go out there and detect so I'm trying to work something out for um you know how they do the wedding send-off I want to do something metal detecting related but I'm not sure what yet right so very cool um well what we can do is like I said we'll sit down and, and we'll create that as far as your fiance um I'll put I'll put what whatever he's holding he said maybe some tennis gear yeah. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll make it magnet so you can swap out with a box of donuts. Uh, perfect. Box of, yes. <laughs> box of crispy cream, cream donuts. Absolutely. Daryl, <laughs> you know what today is? You I know, know what today what, is? Today's National Donut Day. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. So uh, you could go over and get some free donuts. Like, I, I'm not sure. They've been, instead of doing just one day, it's been going on all week. Krispy Kreme decided to do it for. So they've been giving out donuts all week. But today's the official National Donut Day. I'm going to go get mine. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Carolyn, how are we looking for time? Um, we're, uh, we're getting close on time. Okay. Getting pretty close. Uh, because I do have, um, I have a giveaway that I want to do. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a question, and um, whoever, the first person that answers it in the chat um, is going to go ahead and win. Uh, we're going to do a couple things. Got a couple pat a patch and a decal, and I've got a nice, nice golden. I don't know if you can see that. Wow, Ooh. that's pretty cool. A pretty golden AT Pro or AT Max, whatever you want to call it. Awesome. So, but I'm going to go ahead and send those out. Um, let's see. Uh, let's talk about um, what we're going to be doing. In um, in Carolyn, you're going to have to watch the chat and see the first person who actually puts the correct answer out. Mark and uh, Jerry and I are heading to Montana to go on a ghost town gold hold gold hunting exposition uh, position here, and we got two weeks to go. We mentioned the name of the town we're going to, which doesn't truly exist. So what is the name of that town? All right. First person, first person who types it in there wins a golden metal detector. 
I got an eye on that chat and I'll be looking for it. I'm glad I was paying attention. So I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, and like Mark mentioned, that's a fictitious town. So don't bother looking up and trying to meet us there because you're not going to find us. We're going to be at the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, uh, either in a gold mine or in a, an old ghost town or in a dump or um, isn't there, you said there's a river. Ah, uh, that... we got a winner. First, first it? person. It would be Rachel Wallace. Eric Wallace's wife won. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, great I, know, I actually know them. Good. Um, if you would, uh, Rachel, if you get a chance, either message Carolyn or message me and send us your mailing address and I'll get your golden metal detector and patches and decal out in, in the mail at first thing in the morning. I or everybody else, what was the answer? What was the answer? Oh. Morgansville. Yeah, of course. But nobody else knew that. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you how how'd you come up with that name, Mark? Yeah, so um there's uh, uh a lot of silver dollars around that area, uh or known to be silver dollars for the people who, who know. It's kind of a cryptic clue. Uh, so we were thinking of the Morgan Silver Dollar. And uh, that's how we came up with Morgan Bill. That's awesome. And I do just want to give a, a shout out to Rachel. Um, she's she's one of our hardcore uh, listeners, followers. She follows every single morning she's in. She participates. Oh, so I'm really glad to see that she won. Uh, oh, that's, that's really awesome. Congratulations, Rachel. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. I want to give a real quick shout out to somebody too, somebody uh, near and dear to my heart. That's um, uh, near and dear to my my sweet tooth. Uh, Kathy Waters Davis recently started making, um, starting a little home business where she's starting to make cheesecakes. You guys might have seen some of her things, uh, some of her. her oh posts. man, they're good. They're so good. Um, my family went through a box and a half in the span of like a week and a half. <laughs> and I'm actually meeting her this afternoon, and she's uh, she's kind of adopted my family as their official taste tester. So she's got a couple new flavors she's going to be passing off to me. And uh, I can tell you right now, I've had a lot of cheesecake my day, but this is good stuff. It's really good. She she uh, makes them in these small, I guess they're pint jars or maybe half pint. I'm not sure the size, but two serve two or three servings, and they're just they're just so good. So, good. so if you guys like cheesecake and you live in the Central Florida area, get in touch with Kathy and um, tell her I sent you. Tell her I sent you. Absolutely. I've been watching those come up and I'm like, man, are those are yeah. those keto? Because <laughs> they look so good. <laughs> yeah. No, they're not. No, they're not. But it might be worth it to just have one. <laughs> right. Exactly. I can't get through a whole box because I know I'll eat the whole box. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, guys, all right, Jerry, that sounds good. We could split it. <laughs> well, it's about time for us to wrap this up. Um, but I want to thank you guys, and I want to wish you guys luck on, on your trip to Morgansville. Um, I hope you guys find some good relics. I hope you make some good memories. Meet, maybe you'll meet mm -hmm. some new people. Um, road trips and adventures are always fun. Mark likes to say adventure awaits. We here at Kelly Co. like to say treasure awaits, you know. So I'm really excited that you guys are going to get out there and have that trip and that adventure. And hopefully your treasure Thanks, is Carolyn. waiting there. So. Oh, thank you. Thanks a lot for having us on the show. Oh, thank you guys for joining. And we'll be back on Monday morning. Um, Peter Sorrell from Digstock will be joining oh, us awesome. on Monday um, with some updates about the event. So if you guys want to tune in at, at 9.30 on Monday, we'll, uh, we'll be live with Peter. Okay. You guys um, stay safe out there. Have a great trip. And all the viewers, have a great weekend. And we will see you on Monday morning. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye, everybody.